So you're an author? Yes. Philanthropist? Yes. Advocate? Yes. Fancy dancer? You've got more rhythm than I got. Oh. Yes. So <laughs> no rhythm and I have a white girl ass. So we're here about your uh, RICO case. We defrauded the MBE. It's a construction fraud. It was a defrauding scheme for the La Meridian Hotel with the back room. The minority business enterprise is only given to people of color or of minority status okay. to gain bids on maybe something that's being constructed. You have things that you want yes. to get off your heart. Yes. So yes. that you've been holding in. Yes. And it and it happens to be with a longtime friend of yours. Shantae and I met through my co-defendant, which happened to be her ex-boyfriend, which happened to be my boyfriend first. <laughs> okay. So you dated the same man. Even though she wants to deny it, she knows that her whole album is about him all the lyrics, all the words. I was there, I was present, I listened to every track that was on Rise of the Phoenix. Even though like you listened to the whole album, yes. you have met her, I was a part of the whole thing. He was bold to take you around. That wasn't really technically my man. You know, me and him were just kind of just still kicking it. He had me somewhat under some kind of spell. Was it a dick spell? <laughs> was it good? Oh, I love you. <laughs> I love you, you know what, I love you. I would never do that to you. <laughs> Right. If you got a choice between me and yourself, you're gonna choose yourself. It's inevitable. Mm -hmm. You went to the feds. I'm thinking this is my rider. Me, and I'm your ride or die. You gonna do that told, to me? He done told all you do it. Now where is he right now? Well, he was incarcerated. He got six years on the indictment that we all got. Okay. It was nine of us that got indicted. Nine. Um, wow. He got six years. Speaking of lifetime side chicks, Aubrey O'Day. So I, the height of her moment, okay, it, since Danity came, um, that didn't really go anywhere. Um, and so um, uh, another highlight of her life, Donald Trump Jr., okay, she was this close, okay? At least she thinks she was. At least she thinks she was. She was this close to his heart because she know that he loved her. Now let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you what, what, what bothers me about this situation here, okay? Hold on for a second. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure I give you the backup story on this, okay? So, <clears throat> Aubrey Day is out here doing interviews telling everybody that this was the love of her life, that Donald Trump Jr. is her soulmate, okay? A soulmate that was married, that had five kids, that is the president's son that had numerous of other women that he was sleeping with because of who he was, okay? Yeah, I, I think he's a decent guy, but I, it takes money. It takes money for you to just see past all, okay? And so she's out here doing interviews saying that she believes in her heart of hearts that the man that she got to know during the time that they was together and the only reason they're not together is because the White House found out that she was in him while he was married, and they told him to shut it down because his father didn't need no more side holes coming out wrecking his campaign because him and his daddy like the same type of women. This is another version of Stormy Daniels. Same shit. Same, same wig, everything. Same injection, same doctor, okay? All that, right? Highly bleached skin. The day when you see white women bleaching, you know it's it's a wrap, okay? They want to be white. Now, it's interesting because I'm like, how do you come out and say that this man was your soulmate and he had five children? He had a wife. He got staffs. He's in a high-powered position. And he got other concubines. But somehow you said that this was your soulmate. Aubrey, when you were... Here's what I would have asked her had I would have been the reporter there that day, okay? This man had all this going on. When did you actually have time to fall in love with him? This is how you know these, 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 these are holes right here, okay? These are, these are holes because you cannot tell me well, all the shit he got going on, this man flying private, his father's on a campaign, he dropped in to screw you for two hours because that's all he got because he got to get back, his wife calling, other mistresses calling, but for somehow, out of the two hours and one text message a week, 
that he will go drop in and spend his very best and be his very best with you. You can't get to know nobody in no two-hour encounter. Everything that you fell in love with was in your head, okay? All, when you were sitting up waiting for him to call, is this the home? Is this him? I got to take a call. Okay, let me call him and go to voicemail. Okay, I'll be right back. Is you calling? Please call. I miss you. I love you. Fuck you. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Y'all know how it is when you mistress. You know how it is when you sad bitch. You got to wait for him to call you, which means you got to make sure your ring are on at all times, every goddamn alert notification. He know you online because you waiting on him to call. Because when he call, you got an agenda. You supposed to be trying to get a check in that two hours, but instead you took dick. You put you put the dick before your, you, you put your heart before the You put dick before your heart and your needs. Okay? Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. This damn wine. <sighs> and instead of you capitalizing on that moment. Okay, I know she tried to get pregnant. I know she tried to get pregnant. She just ain't spending her time with her. There's no way you fell in love with him. You fell in love with the idea of being with him, of what it would be like to have a soulmate that, whose daddy's a billionaire. And you ain't never, ever got to work no more. That daddy that came and shit, and, and, and you trying to ask Diddy for your money and your rightful ownership, and you had to split that with five other bitches and stuff like that. Listen, those days are over. You thought you had met somebody. And listen, I, I just, has he called since? If he was your soulmate, has he called since? Has he called to check on you? Did he check on you when you had COVID? Did he send you a free COVID kit? Did he give you first in line deals to the COVID shot when it came out? Because he had all that. Did he? Did he? Because I'm trying to figure out what kind of time did this man have to give you that much time, okay, for you to fall in love with him, which means you sitting up just think, and you there. Is that Donald? Oh, call me back. I got to clear the line. Donald, you're gonna hit me. You're gonna hit me when you land in France. But shit, you're in New York now. Why you can't talk? I can't talk, baby. I ain't got time. You dummy. You dummy. You dummy. I just no plan, no goals, no nothing. Mm -mm. No plan, no goals, no nothing. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Hope y'all are enjoying the show this far, okay? Mm. Oh, I like you ain't been there. Now, let me tell y'all what the hell done went down today. Now, R. Kelly done released a whole, well, he didn't release, okay? Uh, he can't even release himself. So listen, he can't release nothing else, all right? So R. Kelly's album of songs that were unofficial uh, were uploaded in album format today, okay, on Spotify and iTunes. Everybody hit me up, Tasha, 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 Tasha. Remixes and cuts to songs that he didn't want out, okay, that had him admitted to things. You know what I'm saying? Because when you write, when you do your first draft, you know what I'm saying? When you writing a book or writing a paper, you know what I'm saying? You remember how you used to have the brainstorm in school? You put the truth down. You put the truth down. Then... And from there, you start to scratch out to make it just a little bit more fictitious, okay? But them songs that he did not want out came out. Now, let me tell you something. Everybody wonder how it got out. Sony has came out to deny putting it out, and some label called Legendary Records has put it out, okay? So they're trying to tra trace back who the shell company belongs to that had authorization to release unofficial songs that technically belong to Sony. OK, and so Sony has demanded that iTunes as well as uh, Spotify take down the album. All right. Now, everybody wonder how did the album get out? I'm going to tell you how it got out. I'm going to tell you how it got out. I spent two days with this man, Don Russell. OK, if you saw the exclusive interview, we put it on both YouTube and we put it on TashaKLive.com. OK, so go to other and watch, you know, go to each and watch both. Now, I can tell you this, and I think he said this in the interview, the only person that has R. Kelly's recent masters as of the last six years is Don Russell. He got them put up in a storage, in a storage, the actual masters, okay? Tracks that are unreleased in a storage. He's since, after he said that he was innocent, 
He didn't threaten no. He didn't threaten none of R. Kelly girls. He didn't threaten to blow up no uh, uh, stadium. I mean, no uh, 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 surviving R. Kelly documentary. He didn't. He didn't uh, blow up nobody's car. He didn't uh, threaten to release uh, 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 inappropriate pictures of these victims in order to intimidate them. Only for the feds to bring the easiest case ever: his phone, his call law, his time, and prove that it was actually him doing R. Kelly's dirty work. But he wanted to brand himself as the tap dancer on my show. Said they had met in the subway. He was tapping to R. Kelly. Said. That's what he said, okay? And he's doing that in prison now, tapping to R. Kelly singing, okay? So he is truly a tap dancer. Now, what's interesting about this is that he sat there and told me that he was the only person that was in possession of R. Kelly's music. He was. Now, he's due to turn himself in if he ain't turned himself in. So I best believe before he went in, because, you know, two year, 20 months, that's almost two years. That's a lot of time to take off and not work and to not have a backup plan. And then R. Kelly, he's running low on legal fees. You need money for legal fees. So what do you do? You create a possible shell company. I'm just saying hypothetically because he got the master's. He got the maps. He got the key to the storage, okay? You create some type of album, upload it, have the residuals and the, and the income coming back to you and the shell company that you, you that you started because you are IT geek, okay? You in jail, so it looks like you ain't do it, but you had somebody press send at the right time just so it can collect royalty. So when your ass, your tap dancing ass get out, you got a little check to play with. So I'm, I'm guaranteeing you with everything in me, this is the person that did it. Okay, this is the person that did it. <sighs> Moving on. Mm. Mm -mm. Somebody said they heard it on Amazon today. I wasn't. <laughs> now, I call the autism community and the Cerebral Palsy Association. To the, to the, to the, to the stand. Okay? Because we got Black Lives Matter. We got KKK. We got all these different communities and organizations, the NAACP. But when they're on, when the cerebral palsy and the autism community, when they get victimized, where are they? Where are they? Why they wasn't standing up with the little girl that said she was 17 years old and she's autistic and she got cerebral palsy and Nick picked her out of the crowd because she thought she was going to get an autograph and she walked her ass onto the tour bus because she didn't know exactly what he wanted because she was autistic and, and, and got cerebral palsy and he decided to uh, sign the autograph and at the same time because he knew that she had some type of disability going on, he pulled down his pants and forced her, himself in her mouth and then forced her on the bed and she couldn't fight back because she got cerebral palsy and autism. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so she, he was able to take it from her. He was able to take it from her, and she was a virgin at the time, okay? And this ain't the first time he done supposed to did this, okay? Hold on for a second. This is the Backstreet Boys. This is that dude from the Backstreet Boys, okay? Nick Carter. Nick Carter. I'm about to call him Nick Cannon. Yeah. But listen. Listen, we got every other organization out here fighting for their own, but why the autism community ain't showed up and why the cerebral palsy community ain't showed up? Because obviously their, their own is, take, is taking advantage. Had this would have been Bill, they would have showed up. Okay? Had it would have been R. Kelly, would have, they would have been down at the damn courthouse. Why they ain't, why they ain't protesting for their own now? Them organizations get billions of dollars every month. The research and studies and just and protecting the innocent. Why they ain't short to the 17 for the 17 year old girl who's a virgin at the time and she had autism and cerebral palsy and he managed to supposedly allegedly force himself on a 17 year old girl. Okay. Huh? Huh? <laughs> right. Right, Tasha St. Patrick on Beagle. Where was her caretaker? Obviously, she didn't have one around, okay? And he saw the opportunity, saw that this would be an easy grab, okay? Less time, he just pushed on the ground because she got, you know, she got some issues, some disabilities, and he just get on about his business and being that she was autistic and had something going on, he thought that it would never, ever, ever, ever come back up, okay? You just can't make this shit up. Moving on. I just want them to say something. I just want the organizations to say something. Okay? 
I just want the organizations to say something. Right. 